that was one of the key points where he realized that I was going to be a good manager because I was willing to get down and dirty and I had no problem doing that. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today I have Max Sanchez, who is an experienced IT leader. He's here to tell you all about what it's like to be a leader in the IT space, give you some hints and tricks of things that he's learned, and um, help you as a new leader learn to succeed. So Max, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so a little bit about me. I started out in the tech space in about 2004, started working at Rackspace as a an intern in the data center and worked my way up pretty quickly to a technician, then a team lead within a year, um, and then a manager a few years after that, um, and where I ran the San Antonio data centers for them. Um, I've worked for a number of companies, small, large, um, from Rackspace and Amazon to smaller local companies and led teams of different sizes and shapes and sizes. Again, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Let's start first by you telling us kind of what the most important thing you've learned as a leader in the IT space is. You know, is it a skill? Is it, you know, the way of working? Kind of what's the most important thing that you've learned so far? Uh, the most important thing I would have to say is never stop learning. Always keep keep learning whatever you can, um, especially in the IT space. You have to know what your technicians are talking about. You have to know what they're doing. Um, in order to effectively lead them. Uh, so that's what I try to always do every day, try to learn some kind of new technology, something new that I didn't know before. And how do you kind of keep that learning going? What do you actually do day to day to make sure that you're up on the new new stuff that's going on? Um, news articles, I try to, you know, sometimes Reddit is a good uh, good place to go and, you know, talk to fellow geeks that are that are doing the same kind of thing that we're doing um and just technology articles out there uh microsoft has some good good sites out there that um, for security issues um, things like that great so let's take a step back and talk a little bit about your development as a leader what is a mistake that you've made either early or later in your career that you made as a leader that you learned from and then how did you actually learn from it one of the biggest mistakes that I've made was when I was in charge of running or in charge of um, having a data center built out for Amazon Web Services. Uh, the, I was responsible for signing off on all the new construction. Um, I didn't take into account the weather and I approved the cutting of the of a hole in the roof for the uh, HVAC units and we had inclement weather. weather. Uh, not great, but we were also in California doesn't usually rain very often there, but it did. We were running around with uh, buckets and just putting them on, you know, underneath all the leaks. Uh, so I, I learned, the biggest thing that I learned from that was always take it, you got to not just look at what you have in the past taken a look at. You've also got to take, you've got to look at all the different factors of every aspect of what could possibly go wrong. I just didn't think of the weather at that point in time. And I, it's something that I should have. Yeah, consider all the variables when you're you're planning. You know, plan for best case scenario, but also consider the worst case scenario at the same time. <laughs> right, and also ask your peers. I should have asked some of my peers what what are some of the things that I need to think about before I go ahead and approve this. Because uh, if I had asked one of my peers, Anuraj, he was, he told me he's like, yeah, that, that happened to me, the same exact thing. <laughs> so something about the rain uh, loves to yeah, attack that's, Amazon that's, builds apparently. <laughs> Then moving on from that, you learned, to, you remembered or realized you have to remember to collaborate. What other or what top three skills would you say are necessary to be a good leader? You know, either people skills or interpersonal skills or whatever. What do you think the top three skills should be for a new leader to really focus on? Probably the, the top skill is uh, learning how to how to deal with your team, learning the skills of your team. Uh, because each team is different and each team is going to have different people that have different skill sets. And to me, learning what those skill sets are is a skill in itself. Uh, Cause once you figure out and have that key point, then you can kind of start putting the pieces of the puzzle in place and have your, the right people in the right spot. Uh, one example of that is uh, when I was, was at Amazon web services, I showed up there and everyone complained about this one technician. He was, he was lazy. He didn't work. He, 
But when, when I looked at the numbers, I'm like, his numbers are better than everyone else's. I don't know what's going on here. Um, so I pulled him in. I'm like, what, what's going on here? And he smiled. He goes, you're the first person who's actually asked me that. Uh, so what I've done is I scripted my most of my job. <laughs> I'm surprised he admitted to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at that point, I realized we had him in the wrong spot. He needed to be on a different team that was responsible for doing scripting and creating those kinds of tools. Um, and Amazon still uses the, those tools today. And it saved a lot of man hours for everyone. It wasn't that he was lazy. It was just that he had scripted himself out of doing most of his work. So he could concentrate on other things. And it's great that you were able to have that conversation with him. And then instead of just firing him, you moved him to where he needed to be. You know, a lot of people in leadership roles would have thought that he was betraying them, that he was wasting company time, and they would have just immediately got rid of him. But you realize that, no, you really have an asset here and really make use of that. Exactly. That, and that's why I think it's one of the biggest skill sets that you can learn is learning how to how your technicians work and what they're doing and what what they're best at and putting them in that right place. I have a lot more examples of that, but it that was probably the biggest one right there because he was really good at his job after that. Um, he was really good at it before. He just scripted it. He was so good at it that he figured out how to code it and didn't have to do it. <laughs> yep. Another skill set that I, I, I don't know if it's a skill, but it's an effective way of leading a team is lead by example. Again, when I was at Amazon, uh, my first, I think it was my first three or four days in, in at my data center and we had we had to have the network ran uh, network drops run by the end of the week, and there was no way we were going to be able to get it done on this is on a Wednesday. There's no way we could do it on Thursday or Friday because we had um, construction crews in in the area that we were going to be working in. So I talked to my team, the team lead, and he said, "Yeah, there's no way we can do it. We have it's just not possible. I don't have the technicians to do it." I said, "Well, it's just network drops, right?" He goes, "Yeah, but we need two people for it." I said, "All right, well, let's go run it." And he later on told me that that was one of the key points where he realized that I was going to be a good manager because uh, I was willing to get down and dirty and start running drops with them. And I had no problem doing that. Um, and once you do those things, they, the, te the technicians or employees, well, they, they, they respect that. And they know that you're not above them or feel like you're above them and you're willing to do the same work that they are. Yeah, really get in the trenches and have that camaraderie. And then what about the third most important skill? The third most important skill is communication, whether it be with your supervisors or with your employees. Um, sometimes you get directives from that you, you don't personally like uh, coming down from your supervisors and you have to relay that and you have to relay it positively, even if you don't agree with it sometimes. Um, and communication is so, so key. I mean, whether it's interpersonal skills, dealing with the, the team or uh, just relaying some bad information. Hey, you haven't been living up to the standards that we have or even good news for the team or good news for individuals or reporting bad news up to your, your supervisors. Hey, this project's not going to be done on time. Um, you know, learning how to communicate can help you manage your managers and manage your team effectively. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely one of the skills that I talk a lot about on this channel. So I'm glad you brought it up. So you mentioned communication is being one of the most important skills that a manager can have. How do you communicate with your team? Do you have a specific way of doing it? Do you do it multiple different ways so that you make sure that they, you know, absorb the information and, you know, same for your peers or your leadership, you know, how are you actually communicating with them so that it's effective and people are actually hearing what it is you're trying to say? I guess the one way I have is to not have a single one one way of communicating. Everyone's different, and you have to learn how everyone communicates. Uh, some people praise, for example. Some people enjoy the praise, public praise, and some people, if you praise them in public, they're going to just completely shut down. So you have to learn your employees and know how how to handle each individual. Um, peers are a little bit different. Uh, I'm usually pretty direct with my peers, uh, so that way I need to get information across to you. This is what's going to happen. Um, here's what I need from you. Here's what I'm going to provide. Uh, as far as man, that, that kind of goes across to manager to my managers as well. I'm pretty direct. Try to I relay the information. I'm not going to 
you know, sugarcoat anything for him, but uh, I will be a little bit more delicate in with some of the bad news, but you still got to deliver that bad news. Yeah. It's all in how you frame it. <laughs> exactly. There's no one, one way of doing it. It's just, you have to kind of learn how each individual communicates and takes the, the, the communication. For sure. So you mentioned how some people shut down when they get praise. So how do you give feedback to your direct reports? How do you, you know, do you take them aside? Do you do it in a bigger group? How, you know, especially good and bad, how is it that you're actually giving this feedback and how often are you giving feedback to your direct reports? Uh, Generally speaking, I I give the feedback one-on-one unless it's team feedback, like, Hey, the team did great on this. You know, we accomplished these goals. Uh, Then I'll, It'll be an announcement or an email. Usually I'll send an announcement out and congratulate them out on a team meeting or, uh, you know, just kind of go and talk with everyone and say, good job. And try to reward them with something, you know, pizza or something that, that makes them happy. Um, for, for individual praise, I usually do it one-on-one because teams usually, or most people, at least in the tech industry, are a little bit more shy. and don't prefer the, uh, public praise. So I, I tend to be a little bit more one-on-one with them, unless I know that individual prefers to be publicly um, praised. And then I'll, I'll generally give it to them and say, great job on this. And then how do you prefer to receive feedback from them? Do you ask for it? Do you just kind of see if they say anything? How are you kind of seeking that out? Usually uh, feedback from them. I, I usually have weekly one-on-ones with my team, uh, depending on the size of the team. If it's a large team, uh, 20, 30 people, that's obviously not doable. So it's usually two, two every two weeks or once a month. I start off with the praise, like here, here's what you're doing great. These are your, here's where I can, I see some improvement, where you can do some improvement. Um, and then I ask for feedback from them. Like where, well, how can I help you what are you struggling with? What can the company do for you to, to help you succeed? Um, and I try to, in, during that one-on-one time, face-to-face, uh, get that, get them to open up and, and try to talk to me and let me know. And give you your feedback back to you. <laughs> right. Correct. So then you do these one-on-ones with them. How are you also working to keep your team motivated and focused? Is it mostly in these one-on-ones? Is it like team pep talks? You know, how are you helping them stay focused on the goal and also moving forward and not kind of slacking off? It's a combination of, of you know, uh, talking with the team during during uh, team meetings, and you know, here's what our goals are, and here's what we need where we need to be. Here's what I need from the team. And the one-on-ones and slash coaching where I can individually talk to them. Like, okay, here's where we, here's where we need to be. Here's where I need each individual person to be to help us get to that point. And here's where you're currently at. Here's what either what I need from you to, to get you to that point or you're doing great. Um, keep up the great work and kind of go from there. Okay. So you're constantly motivating them, reminding them of the goals, kind of keeping them focused on it. In that sense, how are you kind of balancing making progress toward those goals, but also team development so that the team is improving, they're learning new skills? You know, how are you balancing those two competing sort of um, priorities within the team? Um, Generally speaking, like um, personal improvement, I, I generally give that during um, like your annual or uh, quarterly uh, reviews. I try to add goals in there. Here's what I want you to learn. Here's some new, te- here's a new technology or here's um, you have stated that you wanted to say move into networking. Here's a goal to take, take your network plus and pass it by the end of the quarter. Um, and during our, our one-on-ones, I, I do include that. Okay, where are you at with your network plus? How how's that going? Um, what can I do? You need more time to try to work on it at work, or um, is there anything I can do to help you with it? And try to keep them on track with it. But it it is a fine delicate balancing act sometimes, you know, balancing out the work and helping them succeed. But at the end of the day, it's also on them to try to get to where they need to be and. Sometimes you have to do some work after after the job is done, so that way you can 
improve yourself. So you try to support them where you can give them, you know, you know, whatever support that you can, but also kind of encourage them to seek it out on their own, sort of balancing it out. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'll try to give them resources where I can and, you know, and, and the time if I, if possible, but. Yeah. Sometimes those deadlines are pretty tight and you know, <laughs> there's no spare time. I understand. So finally, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to someone new to a leadership role, whether inside the IT world or outside the IT world? What's the most important thing that you think they need to know as a new leader? Always know, uh, always try to learn as much as you possibly can. Um, you need to, my, my suggestion is if you haven't done the job, go do the job. Because if you, if you haven't done that tech job, then you're not going to know what your team is doing. You're not going to know how they operate, you're not going to know, you're not going to be an effective leader. You really need to be able to know how they, how the team interacts with each other and how they work um, and what, what work they are actually doing. That That's probably the biggest key to me. Every time I join a new team, first thing I do is go in there and try to learn. I, I'm like, okay, what, what's your daily process? And I just do it. Try to learn and figure it out for them. And that way, once I know how they work and what they're doing, then I can effectively lead them and put personnel when I, where I need them. Yeah. So you're not always doing the job. You're just doing the job to learn it at the beginning. And then, okay, right. just making sure. We have a lot of command exactly. and control yeah. managers no. out there that like to go in and actually do the job. <laughs> no, no, no. So. <laughs> nope. I don't believe in that. <laughs> Unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, you exactly. be and that. you can't be that effective as a leader if you're doing that. But learning it at the beginning is definitely right. important. Exactly. Yeah. It's just learning and knowing how they, how they do it. And every once in a while, I do step in and help, but only when the team is slammed. So that way I can take some of the, yeah. the pressure off of them. And I think that's part of a being a good leader too, is recognizing when the team needs that kind of help where you can be most effective helping them do their work as opposed to leading them. So I think, you know, being a good leader right. means knowing that balance. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you, Max, so much for being with us today. If people wanted to reach out to you, how would they go about doing that? Thank you for having me. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, that's uh, www.linkedin.com slash IN slash Max M. Sanchez. All right, Max, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone.